glad to be with you again today. I want to talk about a parable that Jesus told in the 18th chapter of Luke. It's the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee. Sometimes we wonder in our own preaching or, or even wonder sometimes when Jesus is talking exactly who is his audience. In this particular parable, we don't need to wonder. Jesus tells us immediately, I am talking to those who feel that they are righteous in themselves. I'm talking to those who trust in themselves and not in God and who look at others with contempt. For just a moment, I wanna talk specifically to those of you who are clergy, but also this is a word that I want those of you who may not be clergy to listen because it's important. When those of us who are preachers are trying to shape a message, we envision in our minds exactly to whom this message is going to be communicated. As Tom Long has reminded us, we can't think anymore about a uniform congregation. We have a constituency out there. We have a variety of people, a variety of ages, a variety of, of different viewpoints, a variety of seeing the world, a variety of people who have some interest in spirituality, but not necessarily in being a part of a religious movement. So you and I are called. We go to our study to be alone with the alone. We pray, we pray, and we prepare our sermon. And then we go public with it always realizing that no matter how deep the reservoir of words that we may have, words are never adequate to share what God wants to do in our lives. It becomes an offering. Here are the things that I want to say, and I realize how limited these words are but I want to offer them to you in the hopes that somehow God can use these words to speak to the deepest needs of our lives. Fred Craddock, before he passed away, always reminded the students that they had to have size to their sermon. This is not a day when you and I can dabble at the edges of life, when we can lack the courage to confront the things that we need to confront. We're living in a world that has been through a pandemic. We're living in a world where the church is still trying to find its footing. We're living in a world where people are sitting out there, sometimes we know their stories, but many times we don't. It is a holy mystery. It is saying to people, here is what I have to offer to you. And what I have to offer to you, I pray that the God who can take fragile words, will use them to speak to the depths of all of our lives. We are fragile. Those of us who are ministers, whether we want to admit it or not, we have the treasure of God in our earthen vessels. We are broken. We realize our limitations. We struggle with our own faith at times. And then we walk out 
to say to people in an authentic way, here's the God in whom I believe, a God who can transform our lives. Two men went to the temple to pray, Jesus said. One was a Pharisee. The Pharisee said, thank you, God, that I'm not like other people, that I don't commit adultery, and I don't do other things that some people do. I thank you, God, that I fast twice a week and that I always give a tithe. And then looking to the back of the temple, the Pharisee ended the prayer, I thank you, God, that I'm not like that tax collector. It is the trust in one's own self rather than the trust in God. We listen to the prayer of the Pharisee and we wonder, where is it that you are trusting in God? Where is it that you are confessing that you're not, don't have everything in your life the way it should be? Where is the contrition that you look at other people and you look at them with contempt because they're not like you? Fred Craddock said, what we need in our day is not just a few words, a few words that don't offend, that dabble at the edges of life, what we need. We need to pray that God will use our words to transform us as well as those who give us the gift of their attention. Two men went up to the temple to pray. The Pharisee, proud of himself, the tax collector beating his chest in the back because he knew he wasn't adequate. He knew what he was doing. What he was doing as a Jew was selling his soul to the Romans in order to collect taxes, always charging a little more from his own people. And if anybody in the temple that day realized that his life needed to be changed, it was the tax collector. How interesting, Jesus said, I have these two people. One is so religious in terms of his actions, but there is nothing in his attitude about trusting God. The other, the other beating his chest because he knew that more than anything else, his life needed to be changed. And Jesus said, you go home and you are justified. We are only one chapter away from Jesus going to Jerusalem. Suppose he had said in this parable, I want to exalt the Pharisees. Maybe Jesus could have saved his life if he had just, just lived a lie. But he couldn't do it. Because what Jesus is about is about those of us who more than anything else 
know our lives need to be changed. And if you listen, if you listen very closely, you will hear the, the pounding of the nails. And that is our hope. That is our hope. We hold on to that. And Jesus holds on to us. Amen.